So I'm going to try and make this video as quick as possible. Um, I posted these as a picture to my page yesterday, uh, asking if anyone would like a, an ID video on them, with the caveat I'm going to have to stop for cars. Because these are right at the side of the road in the countryside, but it is quite busy. Um, and, uh, and it's not going to be easy to do this without getting interrupted. So I'm going to do my best, but I mostly just want to show you the features. Um, these are panther caps. We don't see them very often, at least not near me in the south of England. Um, and it's a really nice opportunity to show you the, uh, the features of a certain section of a manita. Comedy. Noisy cars. We are right next to a road, look. <laughs> um, and there was a little bit of controversy about these on my page when I posted because, because they don't often look how people expect them to. And if you're not used to doing mushroom ID and fungi ID, and you're just looking at the pictures, oh, it's going to be hard to ex excavate now. There we go. If you're just looking at the pictures and wondering if it uh, looks like the picture in the book, often mushrooms don't. They, they don't read the books. Um, so... <laughs> There's a reason I don't usually make videos next to roads. So, the way that we ID mushrooms, and I've said it before and I'll say it again, the pictures are next to useless in your book. They are, they're lovely once you've read the description and you're sure everything matches to see if it looks the same as well. But, but as a, a method of ID, comparing pictures is not the way to go. Um, and particularly in Amanita, um, we have a checklist, uh, a list of features that, if they all match, means that we're in certain sections and then certain species. Um, and this is subsection Pantherine. I think that's how you pronounce it. I only ever write these things down um, as a panther cap. And one of the main features uh, of panther caps is that they have this rolled sock vulva or... I mean, it's described in various ways, like a gutter around the top of the vulva. It's not a marginate bulb. It's not a great big round bulb like you get on a, a false death cap, Amanita citrina. It is just like a, a rolled gutter. Let's see if they have a nice example here as well. Oh, lovely. So, if I can... Can you see that? lovely rolled gutter at the bottom at the top of the vulva so that's our first sign and you don't get that on things like a death cap will have a vulva sac uh, amanita citrina will have a marginate bulb uh, things like a blusher and a, a grey spotted amanita in section validae will have uh, just a bulbous base with kind of little rings of fluff or, or squamules or whatever it's not quite fluff um but that's our, our main feature. Um, when we're di differentiating this from things like a blusher, it also, if you can see, noisy cars, uh, it doesn't have striations on the ring. So when we're IDing blushes and, uh, and grey spotted uh, in section validae, we look for lines, striations on the ring. Um, and all that's from <laughs> is when the partial veil's been still attached it's been pressed very tightly against the gills and the gills have left a, an imprint of their, their structure on the, the top of the annulus um, the other thing so noisy here the other thing with Amanita pantherina which differentiates it from other things is it almost always I think certainly every picture I've seen and the only two or three times I found it has this striated margin so it's quite um it's quite subtle but it is there that's a better picture these lines at the edge of the cap um which don't occur on on a lot of other um 
Amanita. And last but not least, I'm going to try and hurry this up. Um, if you're looking at something like a blusher, the scales, the warts rather, on the top of the cap, the, the universal veil remnants, are kind of brownish tan colour. If you're looking at uh, Amanita uh, excelsus or grey spotted, they are grey, like the name suggests. On an Am Amanita pantherina, they are really white, bright white. And on these ones, we lost a lot of the, the spots, the warts. Um, they've been washed off or brushed off as it's come up through this very, very deep leaf litter it's growing in. Um, but the ones that are there, you can see they are not brown or tan or grey. They are really white. And that's another nice ID feature of Amanita pantherina. So hopefully, despite all the cars and noisiness and stop and start, that will help you to know what we're looking for when we find Amanita pantherina and how to differentiate it from other Amanita you might be trying to identify. Um, I'm going to get off now because it's very, very noisy here. Um, if you're enjoying the videos and you think they are... <laughs> Uh, if you think they're valuable and you're learning a lot from them and you'd like to contribute to the work that I'm doing, I will drop my buy me a coffee link below. Uh, really appreciate your support. Um, if you are local to me, I have, I think, one more fungus uh, ID walk listed in Sussex. Um, and yeah, and you can find me on the Broth and Butter page or on the Ashdown Forage is my foraging business page on Facebook. Um, and yeah, come and join the conversation and show us what you've been finding and how you're enjoying mushroom season. Enjoy your foraging.